you know, everything, everything, everything in life in prison you know all the destruction you know god is so good that even when i didn't even know god i heard the word jesus and i had so much hate in me i used to say you know what if i had a gun that i can reach jesus heart i would shoot him from right here if you guys don't mind if you could stand to your feet as we welcome prophet prophet mario martinez God, all the glory. Come on, let's clap. Let's clap. Let's give God the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to I want to thank you for welcoming me with open arms and I can feel the love. Um, I'm going to tell you, God is good. God is good. You know, I, this, this is beautiful. Okay. You guys are beautiful. I'm going to tell you guys right now. This is the golden nugget for the Lord here. Okay, and, I, and I'm saying this because in Kansas City, we got churches, yes, but we don't see kids like this. Okay, I told the pastor, this is what you guys got here. You young kids are the future, the arrows of the future. You guys are the ones that are going to be ready and get out there and, and have the, 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 the love for the lost. Okay, you guys are not in here for no accident, I'm telling you now. You guys be ready because God, God's got you. He's got you. And, um, and you know, like I said, you know, he said, I'm a, I'm a man of God. Hey, you know I'm a man of God if I brought my wife with me, right? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I love you, honey. <laughs> Anyways, you know, I, I just wanted to say, um, since I was at the hotel, I got dropped off. We got picked up this morning and we had to go do what we had to do came back to the hotel had to get a little rest because I've been up since three o'clock this morning got up and I did my study and I the Lord started speaking I started praying let me tell you the anointing in a different area fell on me today at the hotel and I can literally feel God's heart for this church here and he allowed me to feel the hearts of the people here today I'm gonna tell you it's okay it's okay. We all come from broken homes. We all come from broken wounds. We all come from different places. This is what the Lord allowed me to feel today. But you know what's good? Well, you know what's so good about that today? That today is the day that God, you know what? When I was praying on a Sunday, I seen chains breaking off hearts. Pa! Pa! Breaking off. Because this year is the year where you guys are gonna walk with the fullness of, of God's love and joy. Experience that peace. And to appreciate every day when you get up, it don't matter what you got or what you don't have, you're gonna appreciate just to be alive. Because what I'm about to tell you, I'm telling you right now, it's real, okay? Um, and it took me a while, it took me a while, but you know what, God finally had to push me and had to put a foot down on me <laughs> to get my attention because we had a calling we have a calling jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 says for i have for i have called you before placing you in your mother's womb he already had a plan for you guys before you guys were born that's why there's no accident why you guys are here okay but um i just want to go ahead and um i want everybody to bother their, 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 their eyes and I, i'm going to say a prayer and, and i'm just we're going to ask god to prepare your hearts for what you're about to hear today and just to give listen with your heart not not your mind not your flesh but listen with your heart today what God's about to say Heavenly Father we just come today in the name of Jesus and we thank you we thank you Lord Father for waking us up again thank you for allowing us to breathe your air Almighty God for you are a merciful God Father, I just lift each one of these souls today, Almighty God, and each one of these hearts today. And Father, that you prepare their ears and prepare their hearts and their spirits for what they're about to uh, hear today, Lord Father. And Father, that this is real and that you're not playing no games anymore, Father, because we are at the end of times. The enemy is 
not playing games because he's playing for keeps. But we pray right now that you bless each one of them today. Bless their hearts in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we love you. We welcome the Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Let it not be my mind, my flesh, but let the Holy Spirit take over this service today. In Jesus, almighty God, we pray. Amen. You guys can be seated, please. If you have a Bible, I want to start off with... Um, if you can please open your book, your Bible to Revelation 2015. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And I always start with the scripture because this is the way the Lord always puts it on me. And because it's in the Bible for what I'm about to say. And I just want to kind of give you a little bit of my background. Um, I was raised and born in California, East LA, straight out from South Central, where, where, where I was raised in the projects, in the hood, gang banging, drive-bys, locked up half my life in prison. My first time I've been locked up, I was 10 years old when I, was in, when I fell in juvenile hall. And then I'll let you know why. You know, where I went there, but I want to start with Revelation 2015, where it says, Whoever was not found written in the in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Okay? You guys remember that that, that scripture there? Whoever was not found in the book of life. Okay? And not just because our name is written in the book of life, we're safe. Okay? That means that in the word of God also says we have to work our salvation out. Just as we all go to work and we have to do our job and we have to keep that job in order to continue to be paid. We have to continue to work our salvation towards the kingdom of God. And that's through, through the works. And not by through your goods, but through the works of God. Okay. I'm pretty sure there's things that I have said that the brother here ain't told you before. Okay. Just the experience that I had was... When I had my, my death experience and I went to hell. I was raised in California. I had a, a father that was an alcoholic. My mother was, well, moms, you know, what can she do at the time? She wasn't even a Christian. They were Catholics. Um, Catholics that never went to church. Catholics that never really prayed. So our, our, our family function, function was with out of control there was no head in the house there was an alcoholic it was my dad that beat me all the time i have a brother and i have a sister i'm the oldest one but for once for some reason i was the black sheep of in the house i was the one always getting picked on i was i was i was the dumb one i was the stupid one uh he never spent my dad never spent time with me to teach me things what i know now is because i learned because of my father what he taught me through my spirit. What I'm, what I'm learning now and what I have learned is because of the Holy Spirit. But as I was growing up, all these things was going on. My dad used to beat me all the time that I had to, um, I had to leave the house because he would throw me out. I couldn't, you know, I wanted to come back home. I was a young kid. I was 20, 10 years old. I wanted to come back home to sleep because I was a kid, you know. I want some word warm. I don't know anything about life. Once in a while, I'll be able to sneak in the house and go to sleep. But when my dad found out, there was, there was the beating there, and I was thrown out of the house. So finally, I got tired of that, and I joined a gang. So when I joined the gang, I was 10 years old. I got jumped in. I started selling. I got introduced to the family, which we call it family. I got introduced with drugs, alcohol, money. Started learning how to sell it. Started do, learning how to cook it. Selling crack. Okay? Because that's all I knew. So I got myself in trouble. I got... I got locked up. I went to I went to uh, on juvenile. I did six months. My dad said, "You know what? I don't want him. Leave him there." My mom was the one that, "Yeah, bring him, bring him home." No, 
because under age, you guys are under age, they will bring the parents to see to come pick you up. But my dad was more like, you know what, leave them. We don't need them. So I grew up knowing also the system. Okay. When I got out of juvenile hall six months later, that's when I got myself a more deeper because now I thought I was a tough guy. Okay. Now, young kids, remember this. If you guys ever think of doing anything dumb in your life, really think twice before you do anything. Because jail is no fun, okay? And if you never grew up in that environment, trust me, you're going to be taken advantage in every which way in there. It's not fun. They're talking about killing, okay? So keep that in mind, kids. Keep that in mind. My so let me go on with my story. Um, long story short, as I grew older now, okay, I've been locked up in county jail, was in prison. I finally hit the prison. I went 10 years in prison. I did 10 years in Chino, okay, for, I guess we, we always, nobody's, everybody's always innocent, right? But because of the drive-by, okay, I thought I was tough. So in there, it was a different story. I survived. By, joined, by walking with this gang. I survived by fighting. I survived by, we, if, in order to get in there, you gotta take somebody out. Am I proud of it? No, I'm not proud of it. But you ha we had to do what we had to do to survive. That was the name of the game, it's called survival. But meanwhile, it's, when I was in the streets, I was a very, destruct very destructive person. I had so much hate, I had so much anger because as a young age also, I was molested. I was molested as a kid. So I, I didn't want to say nothing because I was embarrassed or I hated myself. I felt it was my fault. So I, I, I wanted to commit suicide. I overdosed three times. I did everything I could to take my life and God would not allow me to. I was sitting at the table with my friends and we put a bullet or two in the gun and play Russia roulette, spin the gun, grab the gun and click it. Pow! Because we thought we were tough guys, but actually we we're pretty stupid on that, right? Because we didn't know where we were going to go. And that's the game that I would play. And I really, really wanted to die. But God's hand was on my life all this time. He did not allow me that for that to happen. I overdosed. He brought me back. I tried to jump off the roof and commit suicide. There was somebody who would come out of nowhere and grab me. I tried to hang myself in my house. My mom pops out of everywhere. So there was nowhere I can be in peace for to die, I guess, right? So as I grew more and more wickedness, doing more evil stuff, I got myself into a crowd where I started learning witchcraft to become a warlock because now I knew the power of the enemy. See, I would literally see devils. I would literally see demons. And when I asked the enemy, Satan, for something, it would always appear in a bunch of wop of money or drugs or women. Okay? Oh, the devil is very good at bless you. I'm telling you that. Oh, he will bless you. Uh, now, he's not like God, okay? Hey, God says no. Well, if he's a good God, how come he don't bless me? Because it's not your time yet. Because God makes us work for it. The devil said, yeah, here, <laughs> hurry up. <laughs> I want your soul in hell with me. Come on. See? So I got myself and in, 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 in trying to practice to become a warlock. I would go to the cemeteries and I would do my ritual there with oils and sacrifices, okay? And just little things that we would do for the enemy just to get our blessings from, from Satan. I would cut myself and I would write and I would paint the pentagram of blood in the wall, satanic. And then I'll put 666 with my blood. I was marking the enemy's territory. And every time I will mark it, I'll say, Whoever passes through here is going to die because I was cursing people 
because I hated myself for what everything that happened in my life because I had no love at home. Because my dad was always an alcoholic, he always beat me, left and right. See, I'm not showing you guys my leg, all right? You see that little right there? <laughs> That's a bullet hole. My dad shot me with a rifle. My real dad. And one day he almost cut my head off with a machete. I mean, I thank God now where I'm at. See, before I'll, I'll start breaking down in tears. But I thank God because he turned it into a beautiful testimony. If God changed me, he can change anybody. See, I come in here and I feel the hearts. And there's a lot of you that have been broken. There's a lot of you that don't know how to get out of the situation, especially with a lot of anger. You leave church and you do the same thing over again. And then you go home and you go back to the same thing. You put your Bible in the corner and you say, I got Jesus off my back this week. Next week, I just pick it up and take the dust off again. But today, God's going to change that. God's going to change that because God is not playing no more. Okay? But let me tell you, God is love. He loves you very much. All right? See, God doesn't throw you to hell. We throw ourselves in there because of the disobedience. God says, I will remove my hand. And when I will remove my hand, destruction will come upon thee. And when destruction will come upon thee, then you will point and say, God, why? But God says, no, I just moved my hand out of your situation. Because you continue to do whatever you want. You know, you guys are here because you guys are hungry for God. You, you, you want miracles. You want the blessing. And he loves, he wants to do that. He really does. But what's the key? It's obedience. But you know what? I'm going to tell you. As I walked and kept doing my destruction, got into witchcraft, and everything I asked of the enemy, he will give me. Trust me, I will have conversation with devils. I will have conversation with devils. I will see devils around me, sweep by, look at me, smile because those were my garden angels. But see, so little I knew that I was being, I was being tricked. I was being trapped. I was getting, I was getting set up for death. Drive-by, stabbing, you know, everything, everything, everything in life. In prison, you know, all the destruction, you know. God is so good that even when I didn't even know God, I heard the word Jesus. And I had so much hate in me. I used to say, you know what? If I had a gun that I can reach Jesus' heart, I would shoot him from right here. I used to talk that way. Because I didn't care. Because if you was real, you wouldn't let me go through what I'm going through. And I hated him. And the more power I get from the enemy, that's the more I hated him. But now, oh my God. Hallelujah. I can shed my tears for the Lord and I can cry to his feet and we, because a real man cries to the feet of in his feet a real man loves Jesus and I'm not ashamed that wherever I go I love Jesus you can look at me crazy how you want you know the sons at work and stuff everybody with a cussing and, and doing this and doing that as soon as you say Jesus they're like <laughs> you, he just stirred up their devils right there. Excuse me, can you not please talk about Jesus? Can you? Hey, let me tell you what the word of God says. What goes in, it's better what goes in than what comes out of your mouth. I'll make a deal with you. If you don't cuss, I won't talk about Jesus. So next thing you know, they ask the manager, can they get moved to the other side of the department? Good, bye. So that's why you got the sword. This is the sword right here. It's to, not to whip anybody with the sword but to speak to them with love because they don't know no better. They don't. You know, anybody that roll their eyes on me, hey, I'm going to check that. <laughs> you ain't going to roll your eye on me. And I will wait for you until you come out. <laughs> I will wait. I'll wait around. The I'm telling you, they'll come out. They won't even know. Next thing you know, they, they probably forgot all about it. When they come out, like, boom. <laughs> roll your eye again. You waited all this time? That's right. 
I'm telling you. I, <laughs> but you know what? Wow. God is good. God is good. I'm sorry. I just seen a wave, a wave of the, uh, God's precious blood running through here. A beautiful wave coming down. So as I walked and, and, and I was distracted and, I, and, you know, God was so good that even, even, even I didn't, you know, I knew God, but hey, I would walk through the alleys or, okay, it's almost two o'clock. I got to go get the beer. Got to run up there. But you know what? I'm going to take a shortcut to the alley right here because I'll get there faster before that store closes. Because, man, you know, I'm going to get me some beer whether it's closed or not. Somehow I'm going to get some beer. All right. So I'm getting ready to go down that alley. It was maybe about what, it's hitting about two o'clock in the morning. And a voice would always come to me. Don't do that. Don't go there. I'm, you know what? Keep walking. And finally that voice again, do not go in there. And it would really scare me because it almost felt like somebody was just walking right next to me, talking to me. So I would just kind of ignore it, go around the other way, and I had to run. And then when I'll be coming back down from the store, cops, ambulance, everybody in that alley, and there was a dead body right there with a white sheet. Man, they stabbed him to death. And I knew it was God telling me, don't go in there. I lived in in Arizona once. I was hanging out with these Indians. And I was a drunk. There was no more beer. They said, hey, we got something new. They brought out heroin and a needle. I can't stand needles, okay? But that night I was drunk enough to say, hey, you know what? I want to get high on something. So this guy just put that, he puts that belt. And I see him filling up that needle. And I couldn't understand, but something in my spirit was like, wait a minute, this is my first time. Is that how much it's supposed to go in me? And I didn't ask any questions, but let me tell you, I had my arm out like this, and this guy's about to put that needle in me, and a voice said, get away from there now. I mean, so clearly and so heavy and strong that when he said that, I fell up and I left because I knew I would I would have really overdosed that and not come back. But that voice would always protect me, always guide me, always was with me because of my calling that I had in life. So... Everything that I went through, I just couldn't, you know, I was really done with my life. I I just wanted to end my life. I really didn't care. I knew I was serving the devil, and I knew there was a hell, but I knew that once I go go to hell, he was going to give me part of his kingdom. I closed my eyes, opened my eyes. My spirit was on the roof, on the ceiling. My head was stuck on the ceiling. I can see my body laying down in the couch. So I'm questioning myself. I'm like, how come I can see my body? If you guys don't mind, if you could stand to your feet as we welcome Prophet, Prophet Mario Martinez. A Friday came, I was home, and you know, Friday comes, boom. Friends come knocking on your door. <laughs> we sleep all day, get ready for that Friday night, right? Here comes the friends that were knocking in the door, and knocking in the door, and I wanted to answer the door because I wanted to go out and party. But anyways, let me see. I wanted to answer it, but something told me. If you open that door and you walk out, this will be your last night. You're not coming back home. And this fear came over me, a fear that I've never had because I was not afraid of men. I was not afraid of anybody. But this fear that came over me was something about you leave today, you're not coming back home. So I stood quiet. And they kept knocking and knocking back. My nickname was Evil back in the day. They called me Evil. Evil, I know you're in there. Come on, open the door. We got a keg of beer and blah, blah, blah. And you know what? I just stood quiet. So finally they stopped knocking. I laid myself on the couch. 
finally, just back in the day, I had long hair. So I lay back. Not even three minutes when I closed my eyes. I closed my eyes, opened my eyes. My spirit was on the roof, on the ceiling. My head was stuck on the ceiling. I can see my body laying down in the couch. So I'm questioning myself. I'm like, how come I can see my body? So you know how you have a balloon? It's filled up with, with, with um, helium and helium, and you let it go and it bounces. I will push myself down, and I'll come back up and bounce again. And I'll do, I did it the second time. I push myself down, and I'll come back and start bouncing on the ceiling. So now I'm wondering what is going on. And I can see myself just peaceful asleep in the couch. Next thing you know, I start spinning and spinning and spinning. And there's nothing in the ceiling for me to grab. So I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of floating in my body, just kind of moving all over the place. And I'm going faster and faster and faster and faster. And then suddenly you guys seen the movies like uh, uh, Back in the Future, you know how the time machine goes. It was spinning so quick. I hear, and when I hear that, I find myself in this dark place, dark, pitch dark. I mean, you can't even see your hand in front of you. That's how dark it was. But for some reason, there was a light behind me, but I couldn't look back, okay? This light turned on from behind me, and I was able to see a lot of dark tree, a lot of trees, burnt trees, like it was really sad and broken in there. There was not, it was barely any air to breathe. The sand was like real dirty gray. Um, I remember um, having my hands open and my feet were close together. See, I started moving slowly forward and something caught my attention. I wasn't moving my feet, I wasn't walking. So I looked down, I was floating, just moving forward with my hands forward. And my hands were getting so heavy and they, they were burning. And I wanted to put them down, but I couldn't. But there were shackles on me, shackled with big long chains. And the chains and balls, you know, back in the day, had had the big chains with the big ball, really heavy. And I couldn't, couldn't bring it, I couldn't take it down. So in front of me, I see this big black tunnel and you can hear the tunnel from where I'm at. It's going, you can hear it. So I'm like, oh, what, what, what is going on? So on and suddenly this light got a little more brighter. So there was, um, I think there was like four or five demons around me. There was one, two, three, and there was four or five. And I was in the middle. And as I, I was in the middle, on a Sunday, I seen a glimpse of a quick, like a quick vision, like this pentagram, the satanic pentagram around me with blood. And the blood was, kept running like little rivers through the satanic, through the cross, the, the star. So I'm looking at these demons, and these demons are different, though. They, they, they got black, they're, they're covered in black, but some of them had their faces were like rats. Some of them looked like um, bats, um, real long fingernails, real long. The, the, the eyes were like red, green, and, and, um, and yellow, but a very wicked evil, like in the movies, Hollywood, you know. Uh, and let me tell you, the Hollywood thing that you guys see, those movies that you guys see, that's real. Why do you think they make those movies? Because the witches and warlocks that pray to the enemy, they get visions of hell. They get visions of demons. So what they, when they create a movie, they just got paid to create this movie. When you guys put a movie on that's, not, that, that's a scary movie or whatever, or violent movie, let me tell you what's happening there. When you put it on before that movie or that CD comes out, they take it to a room in Hollywood because... I used to hang out in Hollywood. They go in a room and they release a curse over this CD and they release a, a curse over the movie. So when you take it home and put it on, guess what happens? You're releasing demons out of your TV. You're releasing devils. Why you guys think you're, you're so disturbed and, and always afraid of things? And, and, and even if the light's off in the aisle, you gotta run real quick, turn that light on. Because it's not for your spirit. 
And because there's actually is. And if you feel scared, there is a devil in there. There's a devil in your house. That's why you're feeling fearful. Because fear is not from God. It's from the enemy. Even action movies. See, that's, that's violent for your spirit. God is peace, God is love, and God is joy. Action movies. Those demonic movies. Especially these days. I'm telling you. Uh, these days, these movies are, are so, I mean, they're not like before. They just got more evil. Or they have. But anyways, as I was going through this tunnel, I can see the tunnel and I can hear it. And then at the end of this tunnel, there's a little light. So when I seen the light, I was like, oh, man, I'm safe. I'm good. But these demons, I would, ask, I would look at them and I'm like, where am, where am I going? They wouldn't answer me. They would laugh at me. <laughs> They just kept laughing at me. <laughs> and I'm going forward and I'm moving forward. Finally, I get the end of the I get in the end of this tunnel and the light is gone. Okay? The light's gone. So I'm standing, I'm like, okay, what's going on here? And then suddenly this 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 flame, these flames just came out of nowhere. <laughs> Real loud. <laughs> you know in the morning how you open your curtains? The flames split in half. When they split in half, the voice told me, go inside. When I crossed the flames and I went straight into it, that is when I seen a dirt road that went forever. And this dirt, dirt road was where I can stay safe because God was behind me on this. And he was leading me. He was guiding me. And he was speaking to me for what I'm about to tell you and what I seen. He was telling me why these people were there and what, and there were scriptures over them. Scriptures. I didn't know anything about no scriptures. That's why in the word of God it says, you won't understand it now, but you understand it later. So as I'm walking, there was big, there was rivers of fire. Okay? Rivers of fire. And as, as I look down to those rivers, I can see skeletons. And I can see these little billy eyes looking up. And they had shackles on them. They couldn't go up because those shackles were so heavy. But they were on twos. Two, 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 two skeletons, two skeletons each. And the voice would tell me, you know what that is? These are the homosexuals. And those are the lesbians. I warned them and I loved them and I spoke to them over and over and over. But they refused and they mocked me and they laughed at me. So their time came and that's where they were at. And you can hear a lot of people screaming and shouting and burning. And screaming and saying, I wish I can hear the words repent. I want to hear, the, I wish I can go out there and hear the words repent again. But it was too late for them. See, in the word of God, it says, in Malachi 3 8, it says, Will a man rob God? Yet he have robbed me. But he says, With what? Rob me of my tithes and offerings. And I'm going to tell you that why I read that, because as I was going, there was this little dark cabin there and there was a coffin there and there was demons going around this coffin and they kept stabbing it right in the heart. There was a hole right in the center of this coffin and there was a heart and it, you couldn't see who was in there, but they kept stabbing this, this, this inside the hole and the demons were going around the coffin singing and praising Satan day and night. They, they, they switch, they change, like graveyard, day shift, you know, you go to the day, next comes out, boom, boom, they switch. You could hear somebody screaming in there, no, no, please, no. And the voice told me, that is a pastor, for he had robbed me of my tithings. Because the money that was coming into the church, he was taking it and using it for luxury, for a house, for Rolex, for cars. He never once gave out of his pocket. But see, as we continue to do it, see, I just want to clear something up right now. 
God is God. He's a good God. Okay? He's a good God. And don't get me wrong, because I get a lot of emails where people say, well, if, if God's a good God, why, why, why is people in hell? Why is he throwing people in hell? Like I said, he doesn't throw us in hell. The people that I'm talking about that are in hell are the people that already know God. You got salvation. You know the Bible. You know what's right. You know what's good. But they continue to do what they wanted. God will warn you. He will warn you. And he will warn you. The third warning, it's someone like I tell, we tell your kids, you know, right kids? Stop it. Stop it. And you guys want to keep on testing your mom or dad, right? And to what happens? Next thing you know, you're in a room crying, why me? They don't love me. <laughs> they don't love you? How many times did they tell you to stop? But see, you kids want to test. You want to keep testing? Then go ahead and test the sandal then. It's going, it's going to taste better, right? But anyway, don't worry, kids. I love you guys. Um, it's the same thing with our, with our father. But see, we're adults now. I seen kids in there too, teenagers. Teenagers for the disobedience of the parents, because the Bible says, kids, obey your parents. Obey your parents. Because if it wasn't for your parents, you wouldn't be right there. If it wasn't for your parents, you wouldn't have that sweater on. You wouldn't have shoes on. Oh, you don't know my parents. That's why you're still sitting there, right? Obey. Your job right now, you're young. Stay away from that rap crazy music. Stay away from those crazy video games. Stay away from those websites out of that internet. See, what scares me is that you kids, you, you look like kids, but your mind's not a kid no more. These last days, you guys, have, you guys are beyond us because of this internet. The, the enemy created the internet, okay? WWW in Hebrew stands waka, waka, waka. If you look at it, and it'll translate to 666. It's the number of the beast. So the enemy created that to distract all you guys. See, back in our day, <laughs> when we get together in a party, we all play with our cousins. We, all, we even knew our cousins' names. <laughs> You, you guys get together at a party, a, a family reunion, everybody's quiet on the phones. Oh, as a matter of fact, that's your cousin. Oh, hi. And you guys go back into the phone. Next thing you know, one day you're going to be out there, your cousin's going to be in, in need of help because somebody's jumping them. You're going to walk by like, I don't know who he is. I've seen him once. I don't know nothing about him. Because that internet is, is taking too much time from you guys. See, that's why you guys are here. Because God wants you to be the arrows, the future of the arrows that's going to prepare you to bring more kids like you guys. So that's why I'm telling you, that's why there was teenagers burning in there. Because of the disobedience of their parents. God's not playing, guys. God's not playing. Look in, look in the news. Look how many kids, of you kids out there shooting people, killing people. Why? Because those games are so easy to pull a trigger through the game. And when you have a gun, it's so easy to pull that trigger because your mind is set on a game. And you guys think it's a game. But God is not playing. I'm telling you. The enemy is waiting for you. Go ahead and do something done for I can just make your life a living hell and you can come with me. Because once you're in hell with me, you're not coming out. You know what demons do in there? Demons go in there and they torture you. They stab you. They kill you. They rape you. Okay? They can cut your head off. And another demon can be raping you. And you, you're aware of everything. You can see everything. And you can feel everything that's going on. There's no more coming out. You got maggots eating your flesh. You feel these maggots about that big going in and out of you, eating. You're burning at the same time. There's the fire so strong in there that it's burning your flesh. And you're screaming and you're screaming and you're screaming. I mean, come on. You ever got burned with a little match? Even that little match that, ah! You imagine your whole body? 
See, what happens is that you burn and your flesh is falling in the floor. Pow, pow. I can hear flesh. Da, 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 da. When your flesh is done burning, your bones are, are gray and black. They're real toasty and burned. And what happens is that your flesh grows again on you and the fire starts again. So this is day and night. There's no water. There's no sleep. There's no rest. This is forever. Once you're in there, you're in there. You can't come out. See, in the word of God, it says, when God comes and that trumpet is blown, the dead will rise up first. Well, how is it that the dead is going to rise up first if there's not, even, there's not a hell? And says, and you will be tossed into the lake of fire, Revelation 20:15. Well, see, hell right now is like a prison. Just like when somebody does something wrong, you go to prison, and you're in there doing your time. Or you're, you're, uh, um, let me explain. Okay, you're in um, death row, waiting to see when you're gonna get judged, when that time is coming. People are in hell right now. They're just going through that small torture because when God sets judgment and that trumpet sounds, it says in the word of God, first will be last and last will be first. Okay. When the dead arises from hell, they're the ones that are going to get judged first and then be tossed into the lake of fire. It's a greater fire. And then now Christians that say, we're going to meet God in the air. We're going to meet God in the air. That's the rapture. Because they don't say rapture in the word of God, but it says we will meet God in the air. Okay? Well, everybody's like, I can't wait to go in the rapture. Oh, you, you better be a little more scared than that. Because he, he ain't done judging you. It don't mean we're going straight into the kingdom. That means that we're all going to get judged. We're going to stand before the king. And he's going to look at it and say, well, let me see. The Bible, I got this Bible open right now. And it's half ways, it's in the half, in the middle. But, okay, it waits more to me on this side. Well, guess what? That waits more of goodness that you did than bad. So that's what God says, I remember your sins no more. Because when we start doing good for the Lord, for the kingdom of God, start working for the kingdom of God, then that's when God says, I will remember your sins no more. See, God doesn't want us perfect. He wants us holy. Holy for his glory. And how's that? It's time to pray. It's time to fast. Because the Lord says that my church has, has picked up a bad habit of not fasting anymore. If warlocks can pray from 5 o'clock in the afternoon all the way to 7 o'clock in the morning, doing the sacrifice and praying to the devil, and us Christians, we can't even pray for three minutes? And we're all sitting here complaining and scratching our heads because... We're looking at the time. I'm hungry. Well, you guys, better, you guys better wake up because you know what? The time is coming where they're going to swipe the food. They're going to take everything from us. And they're going to put that microchip in your hand. That's the mark of the beast. Without that mark, you will not be able to buy, sell, eat, or travel. And if you never fasted in your life, then how are you going to survive? By giving up? And saying, go ahead and give me the mark of the beast. Hey, I ain't going to die starving. So, as I was going down this road, I seen that pastor getting tortured. And I kept going and I kept going. And on top of this mountain, there was a lot of crosses. A lot of crosses with people hanging up there. Okay? And I can see devils poking their private parts. Poking their private parts. Doing whatever they wanted in their private parts. Why? Because then I'm going to tell you like it is. And the word of God, it says, masturbation is a no-no. If the right hand causes it a sin, chop it off. It's better than your right hand go in, than your whole body go to hell. But as I was walking... These crosses were up there and these demons were poking the, the private parts of women and men because they had such a strong sexual desires on them, they just couldn't stay away from it. And they wouldn't stop doing what they were doing. And some of these people that were up there were Christians. I love my church. 
I didn't call you to be this big macho. Get in the, cook, get in the kitchen, cook something for me. <laughs> Tired of this girl, don't cook nothing for you. You actually think you want her to cook for you in that attitude? Shh, you better cook for me. <laughs> you know what? She's laughing in the room. She's like, hey, he's crazy. He... Go, ahead, go ahead and burn the whole kitchen down. I don't care. I ain't cooking today. Uh, I'm hungry, girl. I, I don't care. Well, you know what? Make us a, a bologna sandwich. How's that? <laughs> we ain't got no bologna. We'll put some uh, tomato and lettuce in mayo and leave me alone. But see, man, it's time to rise. It's time to respect the young ladies. And ladies, respect yourselves. Respect yourself, young kids. Stop that shooting pictures of your private to somebody else that you don't even know where your picture is going on. Get off those dating websites. It's not even for you. You go in there and you lie that you're 18. You know why I know? Because God is showing me this. And God loves you that much that you need to get off of that. That's why right now at your age, is, he's trying to teach you how to become a gentleman, how to become a lady. God didn't bring you here today for no reason. You guys are the kids of the future. You guys are the one that God's going to use in a mighty way. You don't have to try to become somebody to be accepted. Be you and they'll follow you. You don't have to give a boy something to be loved. Be you and he will love you for who you are, not for what you can give him. You guys are out there following what everybody telling you. Oh, you ain't popular. I don't care. I'm popular with God. He loves me. Do you love me? See, God will never turn his back on you. He will never forsake you. He will never talk wrong about you. God would always love you no matter what. It's time, kids, because that time is coming where when that trumpet blows, and when everybody's stuck in here, it's not going to be nice. It's not. So it's time to let God use you. I'm going to tell you right now, I've known and seen kids, even five, six-year-old kids that are prophesying, preaching the word of God. They're already, God's using them because in the Bible it says that the young were prophesied. And God is waking up the prophets. You know how many churches I've been kicked out of because I'm a prophet of God? Huh, honey? In other words, have we experienced that? Why? Because thou says the Lord. Why? Because even the pastor up there, I'll give you, I'm not going to say names, and I'm not, I don't talk wrong about pastors, but let me tell you something. When something's not right with God, and God does not honor, it's not honor with me either. And I'm going to tell you like it is. And if you don't like it, then like I tell people, go in your room, bang your head against the wall, and ask God why he gave you that word. But God is love. Don't get me wrong. He's love. He loves you very much. Our love, God's love for us is, it's a, you think you love your brother? You think you love your children? No, 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 no. His love is beyond what we imagine. Sometimes you guys, we all do something that it's not right. We sin, whatever, even because we're older. Even the, the more older we get, the more, <laughs> oh my God. It's like we're worse than kids. But see, then, then you start giving up on yourself. For what? I really done wrong, so God doesn't love me anyway. I might as well just be me. God loves you very much, sir. He loves you very much. He's been talking to me about you. But as I was walking, these crosses were up there and these demons were poking the, the private parts of women and men because they had such a strong sexual desires on them, they just couldn't stay away from it. And they wouldn't stop doing what they were doing. And some of these people that were up there were Christians. It was more, more, mostly Christians than people from the world. And matter of fact, the word Christian is a title. The way I look at it is 
what kind of relationship do you have with God? What's your relationship with him? Sure, when we meet a when we meet a girl, guys, hey, we want to know everything about her, right? And ladies, same thing, right? Remember back in the day, you guys stay up all late in the phone, even fall asleep at the phone. Oh, I'm sorry, I fell asleep. Oh, I know I did too. I love you. I love you too. And we didn't know nothing about each other after that, though. And then you fall into sin, and what happens? Oh, you don't talk to me like you used to. You don't let me. You know what? Just oh, don't talk, don't even look at me today. But well, what happened? See, because love comes here. So there was a lot of things going on in hell, and there's a lot of people in there in hell burning from every different area, being tortured from every which, from different sin. Just like in prison, there's a lot of prisoners in there in jail because of different sin, molesters, rapers, uh, uh, murderers. That's what, in hell you have your place because in the word of God, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. So what you do wrong is if you don't really go right with God in the day you die. See, I can walk out of here today and I'm gone. And I'm gone. And you know what? I don't care because I know where I'm going. <laughs> but uh, that day, it was a couple months ago, you know, I got let go of my job. And I was like, oh, God, Lord, you know, I got to talk to my wife, you know. Anyway, she was cool about it. Hey, I understand. I know you got your calling. I know God's going to have to move us out again and do this and do that, you know. Thank you, honey. I really appreciate that. Because sometimes we, us men, we're like, man, you know. And, and, and being men, when we lose a job, man, we start feeling like little mouths. Like, little, like we're not even, you know, oh, man. As it is, it took me this long to get the belt back from her. Now she's going to really take it from me. Now she's really going to run things. So, right, brother? <laughs> She's like, hallelujah. <laughs> but see, that's why we have to be the head and not the tail and man up. Man up. It don't mean drag him by the hair and manning up. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about loving them. Action. See? I'm gonna tell you a story be real quick between me and her. We got, we're going on five years. We're going on five years, right, honey? Woo, I got that one right. <laughs> we're going on five years, but let me tell you, last year, in the beginning of the summer, and before that, we were, we, we were going through some, I'm telling you, God put us together. God did put us together, because I went through a 40-day fasting. Only water and prayer. Well, I might not look at today because now I got married and got happy and, and <laughs> she cooks. Because I know you got like 40 days. Man, you look like that. I don't like you don't miss a meal. Well, that's true. I don't. <laughs> but I went through a 40 day fasting twice. The first time because of my kids. I went through a whole thing there. And the second time, my wife and I were in such a battle, such a war, that it was almost like she was my enemy. And she had to leave me. Because why? I was no saint. I was going through a lot as well. Okay? And I want to come and tell you this here, that just because we get used by God, it don't mean we don't get attacked. We get hit. Okay, we're human too. So please, don't ever look at somebody that's up here and look at them like, oh, he's holy. You know what? Yes, we holy with the word of God, but we got our problems too. We do get mad. We do get attacked. You know what? She left, but I knew in my spirit that it wasn't over. I knew in my spirit that God was going to give her back to me. And the Lord spoke to me. Long story short, God says, you know what? Do a 40-day fasting, only water, and watch and see what I'm going to do. Okay? So almost towards the end of the summer, right? What, what day was it? Somewhere in June. It was a Saturday. Sunday was my last day for the 40-day fasting. I turned it in Sunday. God said to me on Sunday, my son... 
be ready because just as a father, earthly father gives her daughter away to the husband, I'm going to return my bride, my daughter, unto you as your wife. Be still and wait. Monday came. I was like, Sunday, I was like, yes, hallelujah. I turned it in, my fasting. Monday came, there was a knock on my door. Real loud knock. Sound like cops. I go to the door and open the door. There's a short little white guy with long beard, big glasses. Hey, you Mario Martinez? Yes, what can I do for you? I heard you're a prophet. I'm pretty sure you're expecting these papers. I looked at him and I was like, you know, <laughs> something else could have crossed my head, right? Like really slammed the door on him or something. But you know what? Yes, I was expecting those papers. Thank you. You have a wonderful blessed day. You're doing your job. Yeah, you're doing a good job, brother. God bless you. So he left. I walked, my, got my papers. I went in my living room. Man, my heart said, boom. I said, man, I missed it. I must have missed this mark. And the Lord spoke to me and said, my son, what did I tell you? Go to your living room, pick up the shofar, and blow it. The victory is yours. I went to the, I went to the living room. I said, mm. okay. Peace came over me. Tuesday came. Guess what? He restored my marriage. He restored my marriage. God put us together. We went out for dinner that night. Not even too long. That same night, right? I moved right back in with her. She went and, 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 and uh, stopped the, 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 the divorce. Everything. And ever since, look. But in other words, don't lose your faith. Don't lose your faith. I just want to tell you that hell is real, guys. And this is not, it's not a game of what's going on in there. There's people stuck in there right now. And if we don't start talking about, to people about Jesus, God says, it's time to open your mouth and speak of me. It's time to open your mouth and speak of me. We can be up here, we can do this, and we can do that in the, for, un, inside the four walls, but what are we doing outside the four walls? God says, I did not send you to run to a church, but go out and make disciples. I mean, don't get me wrong, yeah, come back. I'm not telling you don't come back. <laughs> don't get wrong, look at the pastor's like, man, what are you doing, brother? Chasing my people away. No, no. See, this is headquarters here. This is what you're getting fed with. This is your training. You're going through boot camp. A Marine goes through boot camp in order to learn how to kill, disarm, use a weapon. He's got to be trained. You guys are Marines from the Lord, soldiers of God, that you come here and this, this man here, this pastor here, is his job to feed you and train you with the Word of God. He can't force you to do anything you don't want. He can't force you to come to church. He's not going to be knocking on your door. His job is just to train you. Respect him. Don't talk wrong about him. Especially in your gifts. Everybody has a gift. I see a lot of young little prophets in here too. And for you, for, for, for the adults here, nothing is never too late from God. God's going to do something. He's getting ready to do something in here. I'm telling you, there's this new uh, fire and new anointing that he's getting. And he's going to pour this love in your guys' heart for the souls. I told this, I told, I told this brother right here, I'm going to tell you what I've seen today. This house here is going to get so packed, okay? And, and I'm going to tell you like it is. If those of you guys don't want nothing to do with the church, and the only thing you're here for, I don't know what reason, or you want to move the pastor, or you want to be demanding to this, or you want to take over the church, I'm going to tell you right now, God, it's not going to happen because God's not going to let it. God's going to bring the ones that want to be used and those that are hungry for God. Because if you don't want nothing else, God's going to open the back door for you and you're going to be gone. But I'm going to tell you right now, this house is about to get full, packed down with people. Because the time is coming when Jeremiah speaks, I'm about to pour my spirit upon all flesh. And that time is, we're right around the corner from this. Right around this corner. The pastor, pastor wife over there, the sister there, I'm telling you right now. She's got that lion in her of Judah in her. And she's, she's got that Esther in her. Okay? God's been waiting for her to get, to get up and roll. 
and she's going to roll pretty soon. Okay? So, if you ladies in here, be like, yes, she's going to roll over everybody in this house. Whether you like it or not, it's going to roll. And please, respect God as well. Because if you're not, if you're not in this position here, and if you're not doing this, and if you're not doing that, stop complaining while you're not there. Because if you was supposed to be there, God will place you there. Don't fight about position. Love each other. Love each other. That's the problem. There's no love no more. We don't care about nobody. What happens when somebody's drowning? Or something's going on in the news? What do you see? Do you see people helping? Or do you see everybody on the phone filming? The person is drowning, everybody's with the phone. <laughs> Come on. That's the world now. But hell, it's real. Okay? When I seen these crosses, everybody was being tormented in there. And not only that, I also seen fathers, I seen mothers. Because the word of God says adultery and fornication. And because the man was not the head of the house, they called themselves Christians, but they were out there doing whatever they want behind God, thinking that God didn't know, staying home, watching football games, watching pornography, doing whatever they wanted, mistreating the wife, thinking that, hey, well, she deserves it. Well, why does she deserve it? Because she, it, it, it didn't go your way? You know, like they say, you want it your way. Hey, well, here's five bucks. Burger King's around the corner. And two specials. <laughs> and you get two specials. The last thing I'm going to say, I'm going to stop now because the Holy Spirit is telling me to stop. But one more thing that I'm going to tell you about this place. There was more things that I seen, but I'm gonna stop where I'm, where, where the Spirit of God told me to stop. There's a lot of more worse things I seen in hell. But at the end of this door, when I when I climbed that, that last rock, that last mountain, when I came out of the other side of that door, everything was pitch black and I was already afraid. I didn't want to move. I didn't know what was going to come behind me because these demons were so awful and you can feel the hate off of them. But when I came out of this door, it closed behind me. And I looked up and a light shined out of nowhere. A big, beautiful light came out of nowhere and there was this big, beautiful angel all angel, blue eyes, long blonde hair. I'm going to tell you, the angels that I seen in heaven was not angels with wings. Okay? Because I didn't see any of that. The angels that they're talking about wings are the highest angels in the, in the fourth heavens. These angels are deformed. That if one of those angels will come here, guess what? Every, this house will clear up so quickly. Because that's how ugly these angels are. The people that have served God here and God takes them home, gives them a white garment. There's different garments. Garments have turquoise. Some of them have rubies. Because it, it, it's according to your works you did in heaven. But that's what people had in their garments. And this angel was so tall and beautiful that he reached out with his sword, a big sword of fire, and it lit up the whole tunnel. And he said, Mario, I, I, I was already afraid. I was like, he said, Mario. And he put his hand out and he says, peace be with you. And I felt this peace over me. I always get the spirit of God in this beautiful peace. And he said, who is your God? I looked at him and I said, I don't know. Back in the day in the projects, there used to be a church bus. Ronnie and Donnie. Why do I remember those names from now? Because when we were kids, they would try to take us to the church, get everybody in that bus, dress like a clown with candies all over them, and they'll go chasing them with candies and try to grab candies of them to get everybody in the bus to church. 
I remember Ronnie and Donnie, they would always come up to me with the Bible and say, hey, look, Mario, Jesus loves you. I said, get away with me. Don't, uh, don't come talk to me about that. As soon as they said, Jesus loves you, that little window that opened up, I can see them. A little window opened up, and I can see Ronnie and Donnie coming up to me and said, Jesus loves you. And the window closed. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just come today in the name of Jesus and we give you praise and glory. We thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Father, because there's been a new name written in the book of life. There's angels celebrating in the heavens right now because the enemy lost and there's never victory with the devil. There's always victory with God because the battle does not belong to us, but it belongs to our God. In Jesus' name, Father, I cover them right now under the blood of Jesus. We thank you because they're children. It's about to come to the cross. They're about to fall in the feet of Jesus Christ. That Father Almighty God, I lift him up right now. He's going to be the head and not the tail. He's going to be a soldier of God that he's going to have such hunger for you. He's going to be so thirsty for you that he's the one that's going to be rising up, waking up, and bringing everybody to church. And he'll be front row waiting for your word in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I pray right now that you give him the mind of Christ. Give him ears to hear your voice. Give him a heart of God. And Father, I pray that everywhere you take this family, give them favor. Give them favor, Almighty God. Show them. Shine, shine some shine, some sun on them today, Almighty God, as they walk the house, Father. They'll have a testimony. A testimony for your glory, oh my Shandara. I rebuke every spirit, every devil back to the pits of hell, away from their finances, out of their home, out of their hearts, their minds, their soul, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we ask that you anoint these bones right now. Let this be the beginning for you, Almighty God. The beginning and the beginning of his journey, Almighty God. We thank you, devil, you have no more purpose in his soul. And Jesus, Almighty God, I can pray. And sister, this is what God's telling you. Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep praying. You don't even 
have to ask God no more. The same thing. Tell God, what can you do for his glory now? This is going to be the beginning, and your children, you're going to see them. By the end of 2019, they're going to be coming. They're going to be accepting. God's telling me this. Tell my daughter that those that have been walking in and out of your house, those that you've been praying for, they're going to come to you with a testimony, how they made me, says the Lord. Yes, sir. Your children are going to come to you. And they're going to say, oh, this is what happened. This is the way I accepted Jesus. Because in the Bible it says, it's not like being our own prophets at home because they won't hear us out. Why is that? that isn't that funny? That we're, we're, God calls us to be leaders, but they won't hear you at your house. But they'll hear somebody else that come in their lives. You know why? Because I got two children. I got one boy, two girls. She's going to be 18 on the 28th of this month, 20 and 21. They were raised in the church. You know, they're scattered right now. They're doing their thing. But all I got to do is just keep on going. It's okay. I'm praying for you. It's okay. Jesus loves you. God says, you know what? Be ready to be getting ready to come to my house. Just keep doing my will. Hold tight, sir. Hold tight. Your struggles are over. Your struggles are over. God's going to open doors in your life. Human trafficking. 
How many young girls and young kids are being taken away? So protect yourself, guys. I want you guys to please close your eyes. Bow, bow your heads right now, please. And just repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. And I ask that you will forgive me for all of my sins as far as I can remember them. I ask that you cover me from every inch of Calvary. I accept you in my heart. Thank you, Father, for sending your only begotten Son to die on the cross for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy and love. I am here for you. Use me for your glory. Because I love you.
glass of chocolate or Facebook. You know why? Because the flesh is what gets in the way. And we don't want to fast. Trust me, <laughs> I've been there, right? Nobody offers you nothing. But the day you fast, everybody wants to tell you, hey, you want to go out and eat? Hey, you want some pizza? You want this? Really? Nobody offered me nothing, but only when I fast. Boom. Let's just give God a hand, praise. (laughs) 
So today was just to start, like he says, so we're gonna go a little bit higher tomorrow. We're gonna start at six o'clock. We're gonna be on time. It shouldn't take Mario that long to get dressed, Trapper Mario. I don't know how long it's gonna take. But we're gonna be ready at six o'clock. We're gonna be actually a little ready earlier than that because there's some, some things we gotta do a little bit earlier. Um, come in here expecting something. So there's no, remember I said there's no such thing as those coincidences. There's something that God is trying to do with you guys. God does some things in secret. And then he puts it out there for everybody to see. Some of you guys already know how it really is because the Lord is telling me. So some of y'all get ready. Get ready, Latavia. I ain't even gonna look at you, but I know what the Lord is already saying. And we talked about some of that same stuff this week, didn't we? So it all starts right here. So y'all get ready. We're gonna have some fun tomorrow. I, I did like that um, song, so I don't know what y'all have for tomorrow, but we might be able to just bring that back. I just like the beat. But listen, we got to stay rowdy and excited. Because we all getting ready to get a piece of heaven tomorrow. Y'all cool with that? Come on, let's give God one more hand praise. If you guys want some um, cake, or we want, there's some cake back there, but we got to sell it for at least a dollar or so. So if y'all don't have anything, bring it back to bring some money tomorrow. We're going to help. We got water back there, it's a dollar. We just trying to get something. So if you guys don't mind, if the ones that can, I just want, hey, where y'all going? Hold on, hold on, hold on, come back, come back, come back. We're gonna um, help Chuck just put the chairs together just for we got stuff. We need to get it because they got a, a dance class in the morning and we'll put it back. So if everybody could just stand, raise your hand up to the heavens. I just want everybody, we're not going to really dismiss until this is over on Sunday. But we're just uh, raising our hand up to God. And just everybody say thank you. thank you. Hell is not somewhere where I'm trying to be. If you believe that, say amen. If you're ready to get caught up in the rapture, say amen. If you expect to get caught up in the rapture, say amen. All right, I'll see y'all tomorrow at 535. 535, all right? If you guys don't mind, if you could stand to your feet. As well.